Good evening, everyone. Come on, man. We got a show for black people. Black people have to act like black people at the black people event, no? How many black people events you go to in Ajax? Right? So, you know, just come correct. <laughs> Hi, everybody. My name is Greg Frankson. I am the host of Black Lit Durham, and we are excited to be beginning a second season of shows here in the middle, in the heart of Ajax, Ontario, Canada. Make some noise for Ajax and for yourselves. Very excited to bring you this incredible lineup throughout the course of the, of the next few months. But of course, tonight, you know, we're in a season for Thanksgiving. We have the amazing words from Shakoy and Radical are gonna get up here and touch the stage for you all a little bit in a little bit of time. Before that, we're going to have our first ever open mic opportunity. So we've got three people signed up for the open mic. They're going to come and bless it and share some poetry. But before we do that, we're going to do what we always do. First, I'm going to acknowledge the land, and then I'm going to ask you to, uh, to participate in a little bit of a ceremony that we now do here at the show, which is recognizing and honoring our black roots. So. In terms of the land, we want to, you know, acknowledge the fact that we gather here uh, in this space on the territory of the, uh, the Mississauga of Scugog Island, which is land that's also shared with the Anishinaabe, the Haudenosaunee, the Chippewa, and the Wendat peoples. Um, it's, uh, it's a territory that has been inhabited by these people since time immemorial. And we as black people brought to this land against our will, uh, at least initially to the Americas and some of us who decided to come here by choice. We all have that opportunity to live the lives that we do because of the way that the land has been stewarded by its original inhabitants. So we give thanks for that. We show appreciation for that. And we do everything that we can to honor the fact that we are here as guests in that territory where we live, work, and play. And so with that, what I'd like to ask all of you to do is if you could please rise for the Black National Anthem, Lift Every Voice and Sing. Lift every voice and sing Till earth and heaven ring Ring with the harmonies of liberty on till victory thank you you can all be seated yeah you can make noise if you want too okay let me emphasize something for you all. Just before the open micers come up here, okay, this is a high energy show. You are allowed to make noise. You're allowed to clap. You're allowed to snap. You're allowed to say, Chip. you know, you can do whatever you want to do, okay? Nobody is going to judge you mostly. And it's going to be okay, all right? 
If you need a little bit of assistance, need a glass of water after you get all worked up, just let us know. We'll get you something and get you back into, into the right state of mind, all right? Everything's cool. Don't worry. It's all love here when you come to sp spend time here at Black Lit Durham, all right? Are you all ready for the open mic? You ready for the open mic? Yeah. All right, that's good. That's better. That's better. This is the first time thing that we're trying. So this is a little bit of an experiment. See how this rolls, because we want to bring some people up from the community, get them to share some words, and you know, and to continue to grow that, that feeling of community that we have around this series. So we have three people who have signed up for the open mic. I'm very excited. They're going to get up, share a little bit of poetry. And first on my list, is Floyd D.C. Bell. Floyd, where are you at? There he is. So when we're at a poetry show, we do this thing, it's called All the Way to the Stage. You keep applauding until he gets here, all right? So all the way to the stage. I'm Floyd D.C. Bell, and these are poetry in the key of a ringing bell. Once again, uh, thanks, Greg, for the open mic. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna do two poems. One is called, Why, Why Am I Afraid? And because it's the theme is for Thanksgiving, the next one is gonna be, Don't Bother Mother. And you're gonna find out why. Why am I afraid? And who am I afraid of? Am I afraid of what they're gonna think? Or am I afraid of my performance? My heart is pounding like it's in a race. My mind is thinking thoughts I didn't even know were there. Why am I afraid? And what am I afraid of? Am I afraid of letting my feelings show? Or am I afraid of letting myself down? I know I can do it. Oh, yes, I can. My heart beats the same, just like any other man. But these demons inside of me just won't let me take a stand. I'm a winner, not a loser. I've been washed by the blood of the Lamb. So, why am I afraid? And who? What? Am I afraid of? My heart is trembling with fear. And I'm not even standing before the Almighty Judge. Don't bother, Mother. She's cooking our dinner. She's trying to prepare something for you and me before we go to school, work, or play. Our belly have always been full and never empty. Those sweet two hands that keep stirring the pot can take a loaf of bread and make it feed a lot. Don't bother mother. She's cooking our dinner. I'll bet you it is tasty. If it wasn't so, why is daddy always anxious to know? When would supper be ready? Those sweet two hands that keep getting better with age. It's nice to know that mama hasn't lost her touch, nor her sense of taste. It has been the heart of our thanksgivings and all the Christmases that we shared. Mama, I just thought I'd let you know that your cooking is great. So please forgive me if I should ever be found licking the plate. Thank you. Keep it going, everybody, for Floyd. That was wonderful. Amazing. And now we have our second open micer. That is going to be Alejandra. Come on up to the stage. Applaud her until she reaches the mic, everybody. Come on, Alejandra, come on up. Woohoo! That's it. Yeah, you don't have to do a Fosbury flop onto the stage. Don't try that nonsense. All right. Yeah, man. So you got this. Hi, everyone. Hi. It's been a while since I've been on stage, so just bear with me. 
Okay. I'll be performing two poems tonight, the first one called Mirror Talk and the second one called Before You Know It. Dear self, I see how soft you are with your loved ones. Your kind and gentle words soothe their uneasiness. You speak life into them with hopes that their pain will dissipate, at least until tomorrow. And yet, when it comes to your own turmoil, empathy and encouragement are replaced with judgment and self-loathing. You do not give space for grace when it comes for your own healing. You've taught yourself that mistakes are something you can't afford to make as if you can't afford to be a human. I watch how you compare yourself to the idea of perfection, something we've been taught to believe that was a standard despite the fact that it will always be unattainable. Give yourself the gift of patience that you've gifted to others time and time again. Your flaws do not make you unlovable. Your flaws are a part of your being. Let yourself be. Uh, <laughs> At first, things start off slow and easy. At five, your biggest worry is coloring within the lines and choosing which one of your toys would be the best pick for show and tell. When asked what you wanted to be when you grew up, adults were amused by your enthusiasm when describing how you wanted to be a doctor by day, a ballerina by night, and occasionally a Tyrannosaurus Rex. At that age, you were limitless, free to dream big with an endless curiosity for life. And then before you know it, things start to change as life picks up the pace. As you grow older, your worries grow bigger as you juggle adult, responsi adult responsibilities before you fully come into adulthood. Dreams become a luxury as reality sets in and you're forced to make choices based on survival. Your flame becomes dim and you lose yourself in the hustle of keeping up with the Joneses. But do not fret. Although life has shifted and you no longer carry the innocence of childhood with you, the heaviness of that loss does not need to hold permanency in your life. As you embrace adulthood, you must merely search for the small things that ignite the, small ch that ignite the childlike spark in you. Get lost in the activities that allow you to find yourself, and to allow you to find yourself again and again until you start to feel the wholeness you felt back when life was slow and easy. Alejandra, keep it going. Great job. Amazing. Good experiment so far? Liking the open mic energy? I love it too. We have one more open mic to share with you. And we've got Vilma Blendman. Come on up. Oh, show a little love. All right, so this piece is, it's a love letter to libraries, really, to books, to all the grandmas and mothers who say, go find a book, sit down and read. Translated, child, please get a book. Please sit down and for God's sake, read. So this is called More Than a Book. Child, what you hold in your hand is more than a book. Take a closer look. That's what my Nana used to say to me in days when I didn't want to read. When we sat before the silent screen, me wanting to scream, breathless, restless, waiting for my TV show, and she waiting to show me the world of wonders on thin paper pages, a virtual globe turning, and Nana's glasses gleaming and her lips trembling with passion for words that make worlds. More than a book, she'd say, why, it's a hook to hang heavy thoughts on. It's a house with rooms more than you can count. So go ahead, open the doors, look what's there. Do you see castles and queens and knights? Why, there are swords enough to fight for right, right there on page 9 and 29. So find one, finish them off. Be quick, shh, 
quiet now, child? Do you hear the hounds? There goes the frightened fawn scampering across the lawn. Adventure, excitement, action. Have it all, child. More than a book. It's more than a book. Yesterday, I brought a book and sat beside my Nana's bed in the corner in the sterile senior's nursing home with a pretty name. It's not pretty inside. The smell of disinfectant hangs heavy in the stale air, locked in with forgotten lives, with stories untold, entire books unwritten. She's more than 90 now, my Nana, more frail than feisty. But I sat with her book in my hand, knowing my Nana doesn't know who I am, her memory erased after years and tears. But I I know who I am. You see, she told me once upon a time, she told me books are more than books. And she was right, though I did fight. But I know now, good books bring out my best and start me on quests. Books are my life maps, the remover of roadblocks, the keeper of keys to closed doors, the sower of seeds to grow success, the sweetness to temper bitterness. You see, books are food for hunger and water for thirst and healing for hurting. Look, look at the colors changing outside on leaves. You see, books are more than compressed trees, more than solid matter. Books matter for all that matters. Love, laughter, light, life. Believe me. I know their potent power. For yesterday, yesterday, when I turned the yellowy page in Nana's big book and read, it was the best of times and the worst of times. My Nana lifted her silvery gray head and said, child, what you hold in your hand is more than a book. Take a closer look. And I knew, I knew in that moment that book was a bridge. And my Nana crossed over to me and I to her. Now that's my story on the glory of books. And I say to all you who hear me, hear me well. My Nana was no fool. What you hold in your hand, you hold in your heart. So hold fast to books and to dreams of books. Long live Langston. Let books hold you and hone you. And someday you may be someone's book. Thank you. I don't know what you come to do, but I came to hear some poetry. My goodness, that was incredible. Please get, make some noise for all of our open micers tonight, for Alejandra. All right, okay, perfect. So do you think we should have more open mics at our shows? Yes. I can't even begin to tell you how blown away I am by what I just heard. It is incredible. That's the level of creativity and talent that we have here in this community. So let's keep highlighting it. Let's keep bringing it forward and let's keep sharing it with one another. Okay? Okay? All right. All right. Everybody kind of looking at me like, what? No, man. Let's do this. All right. So now I'm excited to bring the first of our two features to the stage. So, you know, I have to tell just a quick story the first time that I saw this gentleman perform. Um, some of you may uh, remember Judith from our June show, and she had a party, 
oh my goodness, this woman had a party. Um, you know, she, uh, she turned 50. I'm allowed to say that because she said it on a stage first, so I can say it, all right? Well, she had a 50th birthday party, and she had a bunch of people that she knew come up and, and share their work. And so Radical Jazz came, and he was doing some poetry, some of which he won't be able to do here at a family show. But um, it was excellent, and I am so excited that he's had the opportunity to join us today. He lives in Bowmanville, so he is a local Black Durham resident, an incredible talent, performer, musician, poet, and he's going to bring that dub rhythm kind of thing to the stage tonight. So everybody, please make some noise for Radical Jazz. Greetings, my people. Yes, I'm delighted to be here once again and be a part of this program here. Now, I do dub poets, and I do a little bit of Sing J sometime, you know? But right now, I'm going to start this one with one called Region. And it's all about living years. A region and region and region and region and region, yeah. Me I come from far. Hey, yo, I can't tell you how. Oh, I've been warning from early out in the morning, which is the break of dawning. And still yet, enough of them go like so them don't want to listen. When I and I was down and out, not even breeze blow past I man route. It no matter how loud me shout, from east to west, north and south, them no know what me a talk about. While the rich and yam steak I and I eat being sprout, ain't no doubt. But what? Chances are made to take. Risk are there to escape, consequences at stake. But we, a me them a underestimate, are going to take a turn and set things straight. I'm back on my feet again. Me wappy, them can't believe me do it again. For real, I'm out in the streets again. Now you see it, the Eden them get trampled under my feet again and again. And again, I can't tell you how. You know from when? Life is all about making the best of the rest of what is left of it. Radical jazz. That's my first one. <laughs> blessed love, blessed love. Now my second piece is regarding the youths them. We all were once youths. And you know, we give a little trouble here and there. But everybody have them own take on say, well, you know what's wrong with them you to ask today? But my big question is, if we know what's wrong with them, when we not fix it? We just always say we know what we were used to. But, you know, it's, it's different. It's a, it's a dynamic of the youths, them, what they smoke nowadays, what they drink nowadays. It's totally different from what we used to smoke and drink. But anyway, <laughs> before we get into that, let me just start my one here. The youths of today, they're fully aware most of them rise every day, living in fear. Instead of making friends at each other, they sneer, trying to find who next to scare. Be aware, that's not the kind of future to prepare. The seed you plant, that's what the tree will bear. Do good and good will follow you throughout the year. Keep a cool head and breathe a clean atmosphere. You hear? It takes nothing to make me feel like no one. And it takes something to make me feel like someone. Do you understand? Everyone have a master plan. Pursue a career you can't go wrong. Mission accomplished one in a million. Think wise and be wise. Think foolish and be foolish. I think of myself as first and not as second. I don't have to agree whether you're right or whether you're wrong. I'll stand up strong and be the man that I am. Because life is dear to live. So live it good and live it clean. This is not your president, prime minister, nor the queen. 
I am just a mean green cultural machine, a God bless one that shines a bright sheen. Listen to my lyrics. Youths understand what I mean. See? Aits. Aits, aits. Blessed love, blessed love, blessed love. I kind of get in a locomotion, you know. Yeah. The next one is called politics. Things are get utter. People are flatter. Every day upon the news, a peer at a tata. Guns and bombs and nuclear weapons. Weapons of war and mass destruction. Mankind aim and determination to reduce human population or even to destroy a nation. Man-made plan with their ugly intentions. I and I heart beats with a positive vibration, getting rid of corruption. Slow the bees, slaughter the dragon, planting the seed of a new creation. Positive thoughts with great decision, bringing to the table a new intervention. Stop the looting and shooting, violence and crime, the fighting and killing and wasting of time. Is this the beginning of a new era? Or is this the end of time? Elections become selections. Justice becomes unjust than just. Certain things about life is left mysterious. Now, this, what, this piece is a piece where I have to go complete, but it kind of ticklish, left mysterious. Woe be unto the one who get caught up in a Babylon. What will be their justification? So it's up to you to choose or refuse wrong from right decision. Bang, bang. <laughs> bless, bless, bless. All right. Now my next one I'm about to do is called Skin Deep. And it's just the difference among friends, family, people, all we treat each other. And there's one, one thing me know as a youth growing up. I always believe there's a time in the future where we can telepathically speak to each other. And the reason why I say that, there's a thing called vibration and a thing called energy. Me and your brother, me and your friend. Hey, yo, radical, wagwan, why everything blessing about you don't feel that blessed, what me say? Radical, everything good? Yeah, man, everything good, but you don't feel that good. That's an energy, that's a vibration. So we can sense low vibration, high vib vibration. So with me, you know, I write my thing, them in a patwa. This one and him, beneath the skin, skin deep. First and foremost, beneath the skin, love is all I bring. Beneath the skin, there is some serious thinking. Beneath the skin, you never know what your brother man thinking. It's so hurtful and heart wrenching when you don't know what's coming. Hit you like a brick. You don't know which direction to run in. Beneath the skin, there is racism. Despite the fact it's the same world we are living in. Beneath the skin, calling judgment is a sin. In my heart, I have joy and splendor. That's why I sing, sing, sing it out loud upon the boom tune rhythm. Words of positive meaning. This is no ism schism. It's a serious thing saying words that can be very offending. Beneath the skin, to each his own. Don't tell me how to run my zone. Whispering words in a very low tone. Saying things about the unknown. But if you visit one's home, things that you've seen or have been shown, leave it alone. Other people's business are not for your own. Faking a smile inside some of them wearing a frown. But what you don't like or wouldn't do, where I and I reside, I expect the same from you. Not true? No but a wrinkle or screw, because if you do, this one here is for you. <laughs> manners, manners. 
Okay, this one now I'm gonna do for you. It's called deprive. Don't deprive me of my spirit. Don't deprive me of my soul. Don't deprive me of my color. Only Jah is in control. He lights my fire. He restores my soul. He nurtures my body. He makes me whole. Jah is the Father, heaven and earth creator. He is the Messiah, the mighty redeemer. He plants the seeds and rivers of water. Ja make man, man disobey his orders. But Ja come with peace and him come with disaster. Hotter than lava, hotter than fire, it can cool with no kind of water. Oh, when the roll is called up yonder, don't get caught up in a Babylon rapture. Look at what Ja has done for me. Giving me life. That's the greatest gift can be. Oh, people, people, can't you see? I'm always trying to be as happy as can be. Repent of my sins down on bending knees. Release me from my bondage and set me free. As far as my eyes can see, Father God watches over me. The birds and the bee, the flowers and the trees, showers of blessings for you and me. One. All right, this next piece now is a piece of a little bit of inspiration and then I come to myself and say, oh, me, I'm going to do it. I was watching a documentary once with P. Diddy. And com coming from Jamaica still, you just think all American who you see on TV, whether they're black or not, you think they're rich or they're born rich. So me hear a story about him that he has sleepless nights and, you know, only part thing before him reached that stardom. And I sit down back in and I do my laundry in the basement and I say, John, no star. Them youth are really make a name, they come from somewhere. So I write this poem called Fate. It goes like this. How am I going to make a name in all earth's riches and fame? No one wants to live their lives in vain. Many nights I kneel at my bedside praying. Praying for help, strength and a better life for living. Sometimes it seems like things don't change. Things stay the same, getting caught up in the same old game. It's like stress driving me insane. How oh, can I ease this pain? Let it rain, let it rain, washing away my sorrows with the goodness I obtain. No more facing my days raising cane. I know I'm living for a reason. In every changes of the season, I'll keep knocking upon closed doors. One day mine will be open. In such joyous words, I and I and I will be spoken. That's like earning my first token. I promise to stand up for justice, brotherhood and peace. That's my slogan, seeing the future in slow motion. The land, the trees, and the ocean just waiting for me to come take my portion without strife or commotion. No one dares to make an assumption. I took to the change. My whole life I rearrange. Nothing beats a trial but a fair exchange. I'll step to my game and make a claim. You can do the same to make that change. Don't hate for what is earned or gained. For all that I have achieved, it's in the Father's name. Wasted time cannot be regained because I've learned to fight the struggle and face the rugged terrain. I'll hold my head up high and not down in shame. Say my name, say my name. R.C. Malcolm, lyrically acclaimed, a.k.a. Radical. That's how I do, keeping it real. One. Yeah, yeah. No respect. All right. This one now is a piece that I write. I was at a funeral and I see some differences with people because they say, no, that is what you have to respect. And I was connected to that family there at the time. But when I see the one family split in two and the viewing is just one viewing, but it was just messed up sometimes when it comes to family. I'm a sit down there and I'm a, a, a look. I'm here, I mean, I said, Jaja, 
but not the same flesh and blood and why this one don't want to view when that one of view and it's a death. Just show the love no man. But anyway, I'm going to cut it short and just give it. Come to term and I write this one. It wasn't concluded, but I'm going to tie it up tonight. It goes like this. Quest, it named question. What is love? Is it of any value? What is peace? Is it even possible? Unity is strength. War is inevitable. Does death really hold a future? A man said that he is in love, yet him kill him lover. I and I can discover innocent people that get charged for murder. Every day we wake up and rise up, crying for peace, peace, we want world peace, yet still fighting against each other. My confused Rasta, for see the hell where we are living at, with so little joy and abundance of sorrow. Question, are we in this thing together, or are we here to fight against each other? If it's so difficult to smile and say hi, why bother? Sometimes I wonder, what is my purpose? Is there a way out of this circus? Leaving me desperate and curious. Who am I? Where am I? What am I? Until death do us path. Because certain things you can't answer until the passing of the death. And your first death is never your judgment. The second one. Manners and respect. All right, so this is my, my closing one now, kind of harmonize it a bit, because sometimes when you write a poem, one thing with me personally, because I do dub poet, you have to kind of be versatile with it, never just deliver it in a one way, kind of swing it that way, swing it that way, I go fast, go slow, up, down. This one is, is titled Lights. Life is a long story, life is a long story, life is a long story, life is a long story. If the life that we live it, money they have to buy, the rich would have smile and the poor them a sigh. Oh, Almighty, pay your name, me cry. Sing a one psalms for the eye and the eye. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. Him leadeth me beside the still waters. Him restore my soul and make me brave and bold. Put my shoulder to the wheels, cause him in a control. 24 7 him de pump patrol. Not charge no fee, yo, him not take no toll. Strictly truth and rights, where him comfy and fall. Life. Is a story been told, life, have a future that holds life. And I'm sure you've been told, life, everyone have a role. Him lead me in the path of righteousness. For his name's sake, me say everything bless. Because even when me walk, I'm on no walk and fret. Even through the valley of the shadow of death. I fear no man, me say no, not a evil. Me no pull stone, come in no evil can evil. Nah kill my brother like Cain kill Abel. Push all a knife in half him, brother, navel. Life is a story been told. Life. Have a future that holds life. And I'm sure you've been told life. Everyone have a role. Jared and thy staff that comfort me. Don't prepare a table in front of me. In front of my friends and my enemy. Him anointed my head with oil. Me cup it full till it a run right over. Surely goodness a flow from the father. Enough for him houseman a strictly one other. If you violate me say oh what a saga. Life. Is a story being told, life of a future that holds life. And I'm sure you've been told, life, everyone have a role. La 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 life. Life. Oh my good gracious. What radical jazz. Everybody give it up one more time. Yes, one of the originals from back in the days, the Poet Collective, all the rest of it. You guys have no idea like, the depth of that. Wow. Just thank you so much for coming up here and blessing that mic like you did. It's incredible. 
You know, it's funny because the theme of our show tonight is a season for Thanksgiving, right? And so we're here and we have this opportunity to give thanks for so many things, give thanks for where we live, give thanks for the fact that we have, you know, a shelter that we can live in, clothes on our backs, food and water in our bellies that is not polluted, that we don't have bombs dropping on us like there are in so many different places in the world that we live in relative peace and harmony. Although there is some serious BS, don't get me wrong, but you know, but we have first world problems, right? And we just be grateful for all of those things. I am also thankful that this show continues to go on because it's part of this broader awakening that is happening that I see in Canada. I don't know if you all see it, but like people are actually paying attention to black people, like in a positive way. Um, did anybody check out Black Community Mixtapes that was on City TV over the last few weeks? It was incredible. I was honored to be one of the people that was part of the literature episode. But there's all this wonderful stuff about curation and um, about photography. And what, if, you don't, if you haven't had a chance, go check out City TV and go check it. Because it's an incredible uh, compilation of a mini uh, documentary of some of these different artistic expressions that have come from Black Canadians. So please go and check it out. But in, the, but in that continued spirit of Thanksgiving, I'm also thankful for the opportunity to introduce our next feature performer. Because our next feature is the first one who's going to be a repeat feature for Black Lit Durham. So this time last year, she came through and was part of the first ever Black Lit Durham show here on this stage. And she just recently put out a book. I'll let her talk about that. She's doing incredible things. I told her outside, I felt a five point three shake on the Richter scale and I'm like, yo, Shokoi, calm down, no, you know. So, you know, everybody just make some noise, get a show a lot of love because I know that you need some koi tonight. Miss Shakoi Hibbert hitting the stage. Make some noise, everybody. You can do better than that. That's right. Amazing. <laughs> Hello everyone. How are you feeling tonight? If you're feeling good, let me hear you say yeah yeah. Excellent. I'm honored to be here. I'm so thankful. As Greg was saying, last year I was here for the first one. So it feels great. Feels so nice and full circle. And you know, this year, a few things have changed. One of the bigger things being that I have a new book. Yes, because you know what? Sometimes one or two books, it just isn't enough. So if you have to do um, something a third time, it's okay. Do it. Whether that's like a new job, career, school, whatever it is. Don't give up. Keep trying. This third book is your proof. But before I get into this book, I just wanted to make sure that I actually talk about why I started writing and the importance of writing. So I was angry, okay? Raise your hand if you've ever been angry before. All right. Okay. So there's people in here who feel me. Thank you. And so I was so angry, but I had nothing to do with my anger. I was angry with things that I couldn't fight, but I would fight things in grade school. So I was getting mad at things like society, things like school, things like cancer, so things that really I couldn't just sit down and have a talk with. So I ended up having those conversations through my writing. And so with my first book titled The Poetic Transitions from a Hothead to a Conscious Queen, and she turns five this year. Yes, I know she looks young. <laughs> But, and when I wrote this, I was in my third year of university and I was like, I really want to do something to project me forward. But I just know that right now applying to be in an office just isn't really my vibe. So what can I do? And I'm like, you know what? I do have this journal that I've been writing in for the past eight or nine years. And I'm like, you know what? Instead of me thinking, oh my gosh, I have to figure out some way to write this brand new book. I'm like, let me look back at what I actually have and use that. So it was my journal that I actually turned into my first book ever. So if there's anybody out there that has a journal, remember, it is more than what you even think it is, especially if you have a journal and God forbid something happens, at least then you have something like a legacy that you left behind. And that's why I wanted to write to create a legacy for myself, because at the age of 19, I lost my mom to cancer. And 
every day I wish that she had a journal or something that I could have read to get into her thoughts. And since then, I've made it like my vendetta to just say to anybody, if you can hear my voice, get a journal. Just get one, write down your thoughts because you never know. And then for my second book, it's titled The Conscious Queen, Volume 1, featuring the After Dark Edition. So it's more for the adults. But um, at this point of my life, I really just needed to express the various sides of myself. I didn't want to be afraid of the different sides of myself. I wanted to be able to be open and expressive. So with the third, with the second book, I have three different faces on there because I wanted to encourage people to take in the various sides of themselves and not be afraid. And I was also on my Oprah energy, you know, you have to manifest the things you want. And that's why I put myself on the first two um, book covers. But then I started working with youth. It's been absolutely amazing. I will see like a young boy, he'll come up to me and be like, oh, you look like my auntie. And I'll be like, I am your auntie. You know, so I am so I'm able to give the kids and the youth so much love. I really love being in the schools. And then the more that I taught with them, I was like, okay, I really want to be able to give them a version of myself that is actually unpacked and uh, a version of myself that actually reflects. So I'm like, you know what? I think it is time for the third book, because the third book is clean. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes. And it really just shows how I'm able to still express myself in radical ways because, you know, I mean, I want it to know box, um, but still be able to be truthful in a way that can connect with the youth. And so it's not even just for youth. It's for seniors. It's for anyone, because within this book, there's also prompts because prompts literally helped change my life. Just the simple questions like, how am I feeling? Or if I'm angry, why am I angry? OK, this one thing. OK, why is it making me angry? So if you feel sad or upset, I want you to please, if there's anything you remember from this performance, I hope it's a poem. But if not, I want you to remember, just keep asking yourself the why until you get there, because a lot of the times, most of the times, only you have the real answer. And so with this book, there's the prompts to allow people to tap in and actually ask themselves real questions and not just ask themselves real questions, but actually see examples of what it looks like. So instead of me just saying, OK, write a poem about a color, here's an actual poem about a color so that you can actually start thinking and unpacking. So this one is the one, the trifecta, and it is um, finally from this month, it's actually been available. And what I did with it, which I'm very proud of, is that I had the release date happen on my mom, what would have been my mom's um, 62nd birthday. And because a lot of the time, thank you. A lot of the times it's September and I'm already mad October's coming. I'm like, every year, every year, just October all the time. But I was like, you know what? I'm going to find something to take back that day, take back that month and really be able to enjoy. And so now when I hear about October 3rd, it's just a whole new light. I feel like I, I gave birth on that day with this book. Thank you. And something else to feel very full circle about is I don't know if anybody saw me when I first came in, but I um, I actually went to high school on this street, Church Street. So I went to Pickering High. So when I came, I was wearing my like more high school, um, my basketball uniform just to kind of like show the full circle. First of all, good fabric, right? All these years, I'm like, OK, fabric still not gone. But really just to be here and being able to share and on a whole new different light really means a lot. And so the first piece that I'm going to share today is one that I, I wrote about Church Street. And um, the reason being was I realized that a lot of my friends who also grew up on the same street, um, not a lot of them, but some of them have now been buried on the same street. And that really um, made me think about the streets and street life and all these ideologies that not just myself, but but what the young men have to battle as well. And so I wanted to kind of write a message to them and use my poetry, not just for performance, but for actually growth, conversation and community change. So this piece is titled The Painment of the Streets. And it's in memory of my good friends, DJ Rambo and Pyro. 
And one thing, uh, sorry, that I also did with the book was I put like a juxtaposition before each poem so that you can kind of think about what I'm saying or not. So <laughs> the juxtaposition for this is sidewalks were made for safer streets, right? The pavement of the streets. We went from forest trails to pave roads in the name of evolution. Paving the very roads we may one day lay under. See these paved streets, name streets, church street. Church street. But there's more grave sites than praying sites, church street. Just another paved street leading you to another street. Finding more comfort in this cold stone than your own sheets. Paved streets, but not paved ways. The game was here before you came. But still, you had to seem harder than a rock. Even when the cracks in the streets should remind us that rocks can break too. Paved streets holding paved systems, projecting paid peace. They're making high rises in downtowns. I said they're making high rises in a downtown. So we chase the high life without taking in the cold ground. These paved streets, colonized streets that used to lead us to school, fun and fight, sometimes the only way out of a bad night, these streets. But even with the street signs, street lights, street lines, crashes still happen. Is it the streets or the people? Because the people are led to the streets, to better streets that they may never even see. Who knows where the CEOs live? We don't come from the same paved strip, but we still bleed the same. May I be blessed to one day die in a bed of flowers, since too much of my people's blood has run on these dirty paved streets. Let the blood from my brown skin be absorbed by the brown of the universe. I can't stand all these dirty paved streets. Paved pain. Covering the beauty of the universe, which is our birthright. Forget these streets, unless they are to pave the way to Thug's mansion. Every corner, every city. Whether the streets made you have to be one or not. We will now only look to grow in the mountains, where the water flows naturally. We have to step off the pavement, painment, pain that was meant, and take a breath in the grass. And peace. And I wanted to just remind everyone that to go outside, take a walk. Sometimes people are put into the street life without even realizing. They didn't even have a chance. So sometimes be more compassionate because you never really know. So that was my piece to my guys there. So now I'm going to get into a combination of pieces, something I'm trying recently because um, I want to. <laughs> And also because I was inspired by Debbie Young. Uh, she's just an amazing, yes, yes, yes. So much love. Please um, make noise for her. So thankful for her. Um, if I never saw her perform, I would never have thought that I could be that light or that voice. So if you're sitting there thinking maybe I can do this, yes, yes, you can. Because I was like you at one point. Okay, so when I first logged in to writing, I really, I had to find a way to express this to the youth. Like, how can I show them how I logged out of social media to log into myself? I'm like, you know what? I did have my journal. So if I was to say something like that to them, I'd probably let them know that when I first logged in, it was for $1.15. Sorry, I'm going to rewind because one thing I forgot to let everyone know in here is that if there's a line that you do like as a poet, we prefer snaps over claps. Let me hear that. Let me, you can practice. Oh, wow. Great. Yes. Yes. I love it. So anytime there's a bar or something you like, you can feel free to snap. Thank you. Okay. When I logged in. When I first logged in, it was for $1.15. It was in a little notebook that was painted green. Finally, my own personal inbox. Some were real to keep my deepest thoughts. But what was my username going to be? 
something cool and fly, you know, representative of me. These letters now represent my personality. But is that in fact a reality? Because we tweet on Twitter, but in real life we speak to soul connect. We use language to make our souls project. But how can you find out who you are if you don't self-reflect? Writing in a notebook and not a tablet changed my intellect. Click, click, tap, tap, I type with my pen. Click, click, tap, tap, the media has got you again. When you can't go a moment without Instagramming or TikToking or Snapchatting, I'm telling you today to snap back in. Social media can be very influential, but remember, you are an artist with a blank stencil. There's no shame in putting down your phone to grab a pencil. Find out about yourself before you are sold a version of yourself, I repeat. Find out about yourself before you are sold a version of yourself. No matter what, you are beautiful. Take care of your mental health. Get natural dopamine from a poem you wrote. Leave traces of yourself. Leave traces of hope. Your life has more value than any meme, caption, or quote. So before you take the time to make your social media nourished, make sure you take the time to look within and let your true self flourish. And as I was flourishing and, you know, you know, feeling better, looking better too, ah, 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 okay. <laughs> and, of course, I fell in some love. Raise your hand if you've been in love before. Okay, raise your hand if you've been out of love before. Okay, okay. Sometimes it's a good thing. It's something to be thankful about. But even though I was thankful that I was out of that situation, I couldn't stop reminiscing and rambling and reminiscing and rambling. It was like I was getting over you through conversations with myself. I was self-defining the real self-help. You know that words be cut in deep but give no band-aids to aid relief? I am living in my memories, like an open cemetery. Bury me with self-forgiveness. I'm alone and I'm the only witness. You know how I feel, so what is this? Tug of war, but in a circle, if I call you back, am I an Urkel? Feeling like Prince got my heart on purple. Feeling like Prince got my heart on purple. Then all I see is new strains of stupid people. I wish I was next up like your sequel. Strong minds make the weak feeble. Pick your poison, choose your evil. Everyone's got an inner devil. Whoops, I meant to say inner devil. My words shake and make your words tremble. But I'm bossed in inner lostness. The costless have no sense. I'm ranting, but this ain't nonsense. We going back and forth like Aaliyah. We going back and forth like Aaliyah. When I'm reminiscing and rambling, I'm reminiscing and rambling. I be. Yeah. That's right. There's enough color in here to get on beat. You already know. <laughs> Then you come back around. But I tell you that you can heal and toe to the bottom flow. I'm Obama high and you trumping low. Resiliency, making rich of the Pope. Resiliency, making rich of the Pope. I want you to love me the way that I love you and some Ashanti. That royal love like the Ashanti. I let jaw rule and manifest my destiny so no bad mind can mess with me and I know angels be surrounding me. I like to talk how I'm feeling cause without pain there is no healing. I'm shea butter and you just lotion. I'm shea butter and you just lotion. I've been cut but like a diamond. That's why my melanin stay shining when I'm reminiscing and rambling. I'm reminiscing and rambling. I be reminiscing and rambling. Reminiscing and rambling. 
Excellent, excellent. So all the things that are going on in my head, and I'm like, man, I don't even know what to do about this. So I'm listening to a lot of music and just thinking, you know, there's so much going on and so much narratives with Instagram's guidelines or guidelines. I want to be able to change this narrative. So I want to be able to use the music to change the narrative. So then, of course, I was listening to some good 90s old school lovers rap. Uh, not rap, um, reggae. All right, sorry, excuse me. And uh, I really wanted to change this song into a poem. So shout out to Barrington Levy. When I first heard his song, Black Roses, that's when I knew that I was a black rose too. Black, black rose, who oh, who's this in my garden? My black so imposing, they see it as a warning. Warning, the following information may be seen as false due to our Instagram policy guidelines. I mean, guidelines. You see, they say that there's no such thing as a black rose. They say that any rose that even comes close in comparison is nothing but an imitation, a Kardashian rose. I know, how could they think we wouldn't notice? But I'm supposed to believe that black roses aren't real? Is a pigeon not just a black dove? Are my black pupils not just dark brown? Did Rosa not rise up by sitting down? See, I say the black rose erode, but they told us that they never growed. Maybe blacks rolls where they used to throw stones. Like when Marianne Shaw created the Colored Women's Progressive Franchise in the 1800s for black women to be able to invest in stocks and bonds. Or we, when she became the first woman ever, not just the first black, to own and operate her own publishing company. Speaking of first black, they need to add <clears throat> first black in white history. Since they tried to deroot us by burning our growing fields, robbing us of our lineages, but the blacks still rose. Black women, like Kathleen K. Livingstone, coined the term visible minority, and that was in the 1940s. Not only was she a leading actress, but a true guide, making sure there were scholarships accessible to black students. Talk about claiming where the money resides. Now let's talk about another black rose, the black rose that birthed me. The black rose that rose from the land of sun, wood, and water. A Jamaican black rose. One that came to Canada and rose four kids on her own. Worked a nine to five to keep the home that she owned. A seed planted so deep that I became a homeowner at the age of 19 when her rose petals were put to eternal sleep. See, the blacks have been rose. Blacks rose to parks, blacks rose to generations, blacks continue to raise the Martins and the Malcolms. So if you hear someone say there's no such thing as a black rose, ask them who the planter is. We have to know our history to yes our future. I spoke of the blacks that have been rose for the culture. This is an ode to all the black roses that weren't given enough water to grow but still pushed through that concrete. You still grew, your legacy is pushed through. I speak of black Canadian roses because I now consider myself one too. And peace. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Greg. Please make some noise for yourselves. And I'll be outside of my table if you wanna buy any books, support the cause. You know, tell a teacher that you might know about me or something. It means a lot. <laughs> Thank you. Now, I don't know about you, but I got goosebumps after watching those two uh, performers up here, right? Show some love to Radical Jazz and to Shakoy Hibbert for their wonderful shares, their wonderful performances. We're gonna take a break in just a moment and after we have that break, we're gonna get those two folks up here on stage with me and we're gonna have a little chat between the three of us and between us and all of you. Talk a little bit about what we've heard and to, and to and sort of vibe and riff a little bit on that whole theme of Thanksgiving because that's the time that we're in right now. 
we could give thanks and be grateful for all that we have and these abilities that we have to gather together. So when you leave this space to go and have your break, you know that there's the bar just outside of this room. We can get yourself a beverage out into the front. You can go and pick up some sweet treats. There's some books on sale. There's some wonderful things that are there available for you folks to get. If you have cash, wonderful. If you don't, we have squares. And also, as we are continuing to build our series and our show, we've sort of uh, given ourselves uh, a new mission, which is to really grow the, the audience and to grow the community. And so in order to do that, we're looking to do more advertising and promotion on the streets, on social media, into the community to bring more folks together. So. When you go out to the table and you see where the little African anthology banner is, if you are able and willing to provide a little bit of extra funding to donate to our cause towards our marketing and promotion, we really appreciate that. It's, there's no obligation to do so, but if you, if you would be willing to do that, just go and see our friend Maxine out front and you can use cash or plastic for that too. Uh, we'll, be, we'll be taking a little break right now. Please get up, stretch, and then when we come back, we'll, we'll, we'll have our little chat, all right? Hope you've enjoyed what you've seen so far. We'll see you back shortly, all right? Cool. This is incredible. We've had a wonderful night so far, and uh, we're going to uh, move into a little bit of a, of a chat, kind of fireside discussion format that we kind of brought in in the last couple shows that seems to work really well for us. So I'm going to invite our feature performers, Radical Jazz and Shakoi Hibbert, to come and join me on the stage. So, you know, applaud them all the way up. Here they come. That's right. I like it. Radical makes, makes a long walk. See, I applaud him all the way to the stage. What's going on with y'all? Yeah, yeah. All right. So please, sir, have a seat. All right. You'll find a wireless microphone for your speaking pleasure. And uh, folks, so usually how we do this is I'll ask the features a couple of questions. We'll have a little bit of a chat. And then we kind of open it up for all of you. So. If there's something that you heard or something that you were curious about or you have a question about something that you think they might have something interesting to say, you know, we'll call on you. Please feel free to share, speak very loudly uh, when we do. And uh, we'll just kind of roll from there. What do you think? So our theme today is uh, a season for Thanksgiving. And so I guess the first question that I want to ask each of you is as you sit here on this stage and you reflect on where you're at in your life, where you are as an artist, you know, what are you really feeling thankful for right now? And we'll, we'll start with Radical. He's like, what, what, what? No, we'll, we'll start with Radical. Well, as I said, I would say life itself, for one. And uh, as an individual, you, you know how you live in your life. And when you know you have no no kind of guilt about how you're living and you're just happy getting up every day knowing that you're doing positive stuff and people around you can relate, can gravitate and smile genuinely to you, talk with you, call you. You know, life is just not for me. It's just for me and my family and my friends and that's how I feel about it. Okay. Thanksgiving, you know. And Thanksgiving again is also a feeling where it does draw us together in the sense where you might not see a family member for months or for years and they hear that, well, oh, well, it's going to be at that this year. Mm. And then it just brings togetherness, which is good. We have to value that. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay, cool. Shukoi. Um, I guess I'm very thankful for this year I actually learned forgiveness. Mm. Like, I thought I knew forgiveness and the power of it. Like, it sounded good, right? Um, but when I actually took the time to say, you know what, I'm going to actually try to change my perspective and learn to forgive and move with love and compassion as opposed to um, just feeling so strong in my own perception or thoughts of what I thought people did to me. So me really learning how to say, you know what, like to start saying, you know, maybe they didn't mean it that way and then kind of going from there. And I feel so freed from learning um, more about forgiveness. And that's definitely um, one of the biggest things that I'm thankful for this year. Wow. 
That's a cool theme, actually, this, this idea of forgiveness, because there's so much that's going on in the world today where I wonder if people are in a place to be able to forgive. I think mm. immediately of what's happening in Gaza with this, you know, historic beef between the Palestinians and the Israelis fighting over this tiny piece of land that they both feel so tied to over a thousand years. And so how do you work your way through that? So that just sort of makes me think about, you know, what are the challenges that are out there that you feel like you can have some kind of an impact on? Like, not just within the black community, but beyond as well. Are there things that you're thinking about at this point, especially through the use of your art, where you think you can have that kind of resonant impact over time? What do you think? Um, I think so with my work because I'm talking about anger and um, bringing up things like the feelings wheel where it shows, different, it shows different emotions that you may feel besides anger. And I think it's very impactful because if, especially a youth is learning how, how um, why they feel angry and what they can do about it at that young age, I think it'll be very impactful for the long run, especially because a lot of these problems are happening because people just can't let go of something. Like it literally starts with letting go and then freeing yourself, but they're just so, so um, entitled to what they think is right. Right, 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 absolutely, absolutely. Radhika. Well, as Shakoya speaker earlier about uh, forgiving, I think it's a, you have to kind of be genuine in yourself to have somebody have a change of thought. You know, somebody do you wrong or rub you wrong, and you're like, I have to get back that person, no matter what, fly high, fly low. But if you consciously can get that person to sit down and talk with, you know, beside what's going in the Middle East right now still, but it's just have to, you, you, you need to captivate their minds and be genuine about it, not just speak that because you want to change their mind. You have to be really genuine about it to connect with them to change that. Right. And for instance, like sometimes you have people who go around and just get involved in wrongdoings, bullying and stuff like that. A teacher or just a normal civilian would just say little things to you that change your mind because you're about now to go rob or to steal or to beat up someone. And just that little word that was said to you, you change. And that person didn't know that you would make such an impact on them. And if you can have that influence on in people, that would have a good way of changing people's start. Hmm. Yeah. So that's, that's a really nice segue into my third and final question before I open it up, which is about that, you know, that creativity and you know, that energy that we can use as artists in order to impact and affect people. So I wanted to throw it out to both of you because I know that you are ongoing in your creative process, in your creative journey. So what's really captured you right now? Like what is, what is it that's really at the top of your mind creatively and, and how are you approaching it? How are you dealing with it right now? Radhika? Well, I think I, I can always connect it to a crowd. I just look at the crowd and I can tell, yeah, you want something? Me will give you something. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I can relate and I feel that too, you know? So it's like writing my, my own kind of lyrics. I like tight rhymes. Mm. And, you know, it has to make sense because nobody are, is, is foolish. So when someone sit down and listen to your music, when I do a poem, I want you to want more. And I think I write that way. Right. You know, so when I write one, you'll say, well, what else does he have? And when I give you something, it's like, wow, I like to wow you. And, and poetry, again, remember, you know, it's not always been around music, which is the base of any music. Yes. The thing is that you want to deliver. You want to execute. You want to do it with conviction, you know, expression, you know, relate, interact with the people, connect with them, and that's it for me. Cool. All right. And I'll keep doing that. Yeah. yeah, you know, you did it tonight. You know, you did your thing. Thanks, man. Thanks. That's right, Appreciate right? It. Right? It. Did his thing tonight. That's it. All right, Ms. Hibbert. Yes, I think what I'm more intrigued with right now at where I am with my art is really asking people questions um, and seeing, I, I just love hearing other people's stories. You just never know. Like I did a facilitation yesterday and there was only one boy in there, but sometimes I'm like, uh, you will get the message today. You know, like, it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was meant to connect with just yes. you. You're in here for over an hour and a half. Yes, this is 
great. Yeah. And so um, within like under 10 minutes, he wrote this amazing like eight line poem. And I'm just like, I was so shocked. I'm like, wow, like you actually had all of this in you. Then I just think, wow, like how many other people just need to be asked a question and give 15 minutes and some lo-fi beats to sit and write something? How much could they actually say? So I'm really just fascinated with um, getting people to think because I realize the way that I think, I would just think it was um, normal. But I realized the more that I talk to people that I have a more like dreamy type of thought because I really connect with my inner child. But I want people to do that more as well because that's what keeps us free and not so trapped in this adulting, which is ghetto. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love that. I love that. Thank you both. It's like that energy, you know, um, and, and how we can affect and impact other people as, as creative beings. And yes, that real interest in the story that either that story that we can tell about our own steps or the stories that we can have other people share about theirs, you know? It's all about that. So now we throw it open to you. Are there any comments or questions from the audience? If you have a comment, that's cool too. You can just say fun stuff. You don't have to ask a question, but if you do have a question, we'd love to hear it. All right, right here in the front. First of all, both of you were incredible tonight. And Thank this you. whole event has been amazing. It's my first time out at one of the Black Lives Matter events here in Durham, so I'm really glad to Thank you, thank you. So, um, Shakoi, you mentioned to be young, being kind of one of your inspirations. Yeah. And Ramiko, I don't know if this is an inspiration, but you were giving me like Boots Baruka vibes thank with you. the dumb poetry. And so, my question is kind of two pronged. I'm interested to know who are some of your inspirations, but also how do you absorb the inspiration while still making your art your own and not letting that inspiration shape the way you? That's a great question. <laughs> so with Debbie Young being a huge inspiration to me, what I liked, well, what I loved about her performance is, first of all, I was in the audience and she didn't know me, but I was crying. I'm like, how is she doing this? Like, what, what is going on? And so, and I love that she wasn't, go she wasn't um, shying away from the more difficult conversations. And that actually made me feel more free having the difficult conversation in the air. So now I was like, I want to put difficult conversations in the air. Um, but I want to do that, of course, through my own way. And actually, why I started kind of merging poems is because I recently went to her book launch in September. And so I see that she's merging her poems, but obviously at like a really high level that one day I'm, I'm going to get to. But um, so just seeing that, knowing that I'm not at the place to be able to piece it like that yet, but even just doing it in big blocks is how I can be inspired by her, but still do it in my own way. Yeah. That's cool. Thanks. That's cool. Radical. Okay, I think I'm inspired by Muta Baruka for one, DYCR. I don't know if you know that other Jamaican poet. And also Bob Marley. And with these guys, it's two ways of music when you listen to music. A friend of mine said to me once, I noticed you listen to the lyrics. I said, what do you listen to? He listens to the beat. Right. Both is important. But I think your content is what makes the song live long term. Right. Dancehall music is a three month span and people don't know that. If you make a hit in three months, you need to make another one. If you write a good written song that has substance to it, it lives over a two year period. So I write my stuff that people wouldn't mind playing again and again and again. And you know, with these guys, they inspire me. Overall, they all inspire me. But when I, when I cook, I cook a lot on my page. I have to play music. And believe me, people, sometimes they get emotional, depends who singing. Because I saw some love of in your part. And that's one way I interject love into my food. And I'm just inspired by music overall. And that makes me write. And if it's not strong enough, I rewrite, rewrite, and mm. just love it. Nice. That's about it for me. Nice, nice, yeah, nice, nice, nice. That's awesome. I saw another hand, so I don't want to jump in. Oh, there it was. That's right. Yeah, go ahead. Speak loud and state your, state your case. Hi, everyone. My name is Janika. This is also my first time coming to this event, so um, So you're talking about, like, difficult conversations um, and full, like, 
have the heart and write it. So there's someone very close to my life. He also lost his mom to cancer three years ago. And there's a lot of like, very deep, dark feelings that I'm not get out. Um, he likes to play like, on video games, doesn't want to talk about his feelings. Um, and I want to know if we have like a suggestion on how to start conversation to encourage him to try to write it get his feelings out. He doesn't want to say it to a person and like at least getting it out. Yes, first of all, my condolences to your friend and thank you for asking that question and thinking of him because even you doing that, you are being like an activist for him because right now he's maybe not the space where he can. And so one thing that um, I, I don't, okay, so one thing that I think really helped me is finding a why again. Like why do I, want to be here? Why does it matter for me to um, care about myself, to be honest? Because you, you, just, you just pretty much kind of stop caring about yourself and you have to learn how to do that again. And so I would say before he even starts writing, he probably needs to start reading mm -hmm. so that he can take in stuff first so that he's not, there's more um, purpose with what he's getting out. So a book that really helped me was um, by Don Miguel Ruiz, The Four Agreements. Yes. And yeah, that book, um, because I was in a very dark place, I didn't care to live anymore, I didn't care. But I was like, how can I find a way to care again? And what that book did, it just um, helped me change my mindset. Because what he has to work on first is the mindset. And even when it's like, yo, okay, Honestly, I'm coming to your house and I just want to walk with you. Like sometimes the nothing, because there's, there's only so much you can say, but sometimes just being there in silence really fills it as well. Um, it wasn't really until my godmom came to me and she was like, yo, like the house is so dark, open the window, like you need to get up, you need to care about yourself. Of course, she's Jamaican, so it's more like, get up, me don't want to come out of the house again. And everything dark, and you, say, you think angels can't pass through like? You think angels can't pass through light? And like, to this day, to this day, that was the, the, the thing that made me say, wait, I'm still here. So I would say remind him that he's still here. So there's a reason. And for that reason, he can bring her on and carry on her legacy and her story through him still being here because he's here for a reason. So just remember or keep reminding him that he's here for a reason and he's valued. So I hope that helps and just like the little things, but definitely um, reading first before being able to just be like, screw this on paper. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Let pleasure. me answer her. Let me add to that. I agree with Shikoya saying that reading. Reading kind of explore and expand the mind. And people are unique. We have different personalities. Mm. You have people who would keep a secret or keep a problem with them. And I learned this from a very long time from my dad's older brother. Two things you cannot hide from people or keep away from people is sickness and problems. If you don't talk about it, it will consume you. So you have to know a way, find his medium to relate that to him. And I hope this could, he could relate to it. Let him know that don't consume yourself because it brings sickness and it brings pain, whether you believe it or not. You're keeping it inside, you're gonna explode one day. So if you don't share that problem or that sickness, you're gonna end up being to the wayside. Right, right, power. Go ahead, sir. I was just wondering, how did you, did you still get that book? Or did you have to write it? Um, I was working a call center job and I was literally working selling accidental death insurance. So it was not good. It was not a good time, you know. The conversations were, were not great. Um, but there was, and I don't remember the girl's name. I thought it was one girl, but then I reached out to her on Facebook. I'm like, thank you for the book. And she's like, I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm like, okay. So I don't remember exactly who gave it to me, but I was in a call center atmosphere, so it was all stress, and so we're all just trying to help each other's mindset. And that's how I found out the book about the book, and then I went to, like, chapters and got it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, Four Agreements was a great book. Question down here. My husband died the 4th of November last year, right? He went down to Jamaica and died down there. And uh, 
the 4th of November coming, it's one year since he died. And uh, every time I thought about him, I'm getting press and everything. It's coming up to the day when he died. And he was buried December, last December. But I'm asking you, you mentioned that your mother had cancer because my husband died from cancer too, eh? And uh, I was wondering how did, did you grieve through the process? Because mine is very fresh. Um, I would say, and uh, probably still to this day, I probably cry every day, to be honest. I just learned to embrace that, like sometimes you have to embrace that you will never feel the same and um, let yourself break. Every day can't be a, oh, yes, I'm getting through this so great, you know? So you really have to, especially when it comes to those days where it's the anniversaries, the, the birthdays, you really have to take the time to just be sad on that day sometime, you know? And then, but you say, okay, but tomorrow I'm going to, I'm going to, like, take a walk or something. I'm going to go watch the sunset. I do really, like, quiet, chill, basic things that make, that remind me that, this small thing, like just watching the water, is a huge blessing. And sometimes if I'm quiet enough, I feel like I can like hear messages from the actual water. Mm -hmm. So I think it's really just like taking the time to one, let yourself, let yourself break, let yourself be in that blubbering moment because those are gonna happen and randomly too, randomly. So you, you don't feel bad that you have to have those moments, but then also when you're in those big good moments, be in those good moments, live there, like really indulge every single moment of it because you never know because it's going to be ups and downs, but take your time and do what you can. Even probably um, some like grieving circles or spaces, those can be really helpful as well, depending on what the community offers. I went to one in Arizona because I was scared to do one local, but <laughs> <laughs> you know, because sometimes you don't know it, I'm just being honest, but um, even then, it was just like, that's when I realized, wow, like our pain could actually bring us together because if we all are feeling this pain, why can't we talk about it? So I'd say um, I commend you on even making sure to share today. Um, and can we just give her some, some class for that because it's not easy. <laughs> but just know, like, keep talking about them. Keep, the more that we keep talking about them, the more that they stay around us. And it's been over 10 years now. I still feel like it's yesterday, so I just like remind myself that like I'm not even trying to heal. I'm just trying to live and cope. Yeah, we're very fortunate. I mean, as as both of these artists were talking about, just the fact that we're, that we're all here. You know, I you know I live in Whitby. Shakoy is from here in Ajax, and 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 Radical lives out in Bowmanville. Like we've got the folks right here in our in our home communities where we can come together and, and be able to share like this and. I think one of the greatest uh, uh, benefits of this series that I've seen so far is just the level of awareness that has started to grow as to the level of talent and depth of people that are here. Because a lot of folks don't even know how many black people there are out here. There's over 70,000 black people in Durham region. 70,000. It's a lot of people. And so we have to like work on having more opportunities for us all to gather like this, you know? The other thing that's really interesting to me, and I'm gonna throw this out to the two of you as well, is that, you know, as I say, we, we all live in different parts of Durham and whatever else, but we're all, you know, we all have our roots in Jamaica, you know? Um, so I just, I just find that, th I didn't do that on purpose. It's an accident. It's an accident. Big up Jamaica! It's an accident. <laughs> but, you know, one of, the, one of the things, you know, I asked you guys about what's really capturing you artistically at this point in your life. And for me right now, it's around finding those stories around uh, the folks who left Jamaica, you know, from the time of the Windrush generation till today and have settled in the UK, in the US, in Canada. And the outsized impact that this tiny little island in the Caribbean is having. So I want to ask you folks, like, what is it from, you know, from, your, from your Jamaican heritage that you think has really inspired you and guides you and gives you strength as artists? Well, I can tell you for sure. I grew up in Kingston 11, Jamaica, Waterhouse. And 
I know a lot of artists, like even Scare Them Crew, Ari Tadler, we call him a little brother. Hmm. Shabba Rankin, I uh, who listen to on the corner every Sunday. Mother said, I forgot to buy a bungalow, call a loaf, cook me down there, I listen to Shabba. <laughs> and another guy by the name of Barkadi. So when it comes to Friday evening, we have this youth named Mikey. He was born one of the fortunate ones, have a little bit of amplifier and two speaker. Uh, 20 were in a winner, one little hut. And everybody want a piece of the mic. And we're, we're driven to come next week with a better line or a stronger line. Mm. And sometimes we lick with one another and say, Chuma, you're not saying nothing, man. Give me the mic. <laughs> and it, 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 it's just a driven thing still because we still love it with each other. And that is kind of a something that me no said me to see them in Jamaica, probably more do better. Because mm. when I come here, I couldn't find nobody. I was just telling my niece a while ago. I come here and I try to find bridges and bridges who love poetry, I love writing, I love things. Me not have nobody, I do it for my own. And that's how I'm still here right now. And mm. she's trying to be a motivation to me to say, no, you're not giving up, you're not giving up. Because I'm kind of tired sometimes, but every time, when Craig called me, I'm frightened. <laughs> <laughs> I'm frightened, but I said, no, I have to take the platform there, you know, because it's just exposure again and recognition, you know what I mean? At least what I have is not corny, you know, it can be listened to and... I love, I love the fact that you reach out to me, you know, so I can get for sharing. Yeah, man. So that's one of my drive for continue doing it. Yeah. Yeah. All these people love you, man. They all love what you have to say. All of them. So don't be surprised you get a little call. Be like, excuse me, is this Mr. Radical? <laughs> I would like you to come and do an event for me, please, and do that dubbing thing. That you do. <laughs> right? It's going to be all right. You're going to hear more. All right? Okay, okay. All right. Respect. All right. Respect. <laughs> Yes, and we definitely need your voice. Thanks. So please keep going, especially as a first generation. Men always have the right accent. <laughs> so <laughs> when you're actually from there, yeah. So thank you yes. so much for the work that you do and really Thanks. pushing the dub poetry. Yeah. Um, as of recently, I don't know if it's true, but I'm just going to say it. So I don't Google check after, guys. Um, but there was a new version of um, the Bible written in Jamaican yes. Patwa. Yes. And I think that is so amazing. Like, for Patwa to be recognized like that, finally, you know. But they're teaching it in the University of Toronto, UFT. Oh, what the? Oh, who? Yeah, they're teaching Patwa in UFT downtown. Yeah, man. I'll be sending some emails. <laughs> <laughs> that is amazing. Yeah. Wow. That's awesome. And so, um,. How I'm inspired by the Jamaican culture. Well, my dad is from Tivoli Gardens. Anybody? Tivoli? Yeah, Tivoli. Ba, 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 yes, bro. yes, yes. Big up. And so, just um, that that energy of just like we don't care how it is. This is how we're gonna make it. So it's like even though I was, I didn't grow up like very rich or anything. Like I was always rich internally because of my sp my parents' energy. Um, two Libras, so they were just always playing Scrabble and dominoes and all those things. So really, I guess like just the love and the the unity from the Jamaican culture and the vibes really just encouraged me to um, make sure to always put in a bit of patois, even when I'm speaking with the youth, so mm. they know that like. This is also a language. Yeah. And it's a legit form of expression uh, to use artistically as well. Yes. And so know. I also want to say one more thing. That's why I love Debbie Young, because her recent, she writes her poetry all in Patois and lowercase. She no cure about English. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> uh, that's a great place for us. You know, I looked at my watch and I'm like, oh my gosh, it's already nine o'clock. But I see one final question. If it's a quick one. All right, go ahead. Okay, so I'll be quick. Both of you mentioned in your art as well as in your work about uh, working with youth and young people. And I know we all have a responsibility, whether we work with them or not, for inspiring a next generation. So I'm just wondering, um, what advice would you give us in terms of helping the youth and young people in our circles to take those first steps of expression, especially in the complex Durham Black context? I would say youths in general always need a listening ear. And as parents, some are we too big for listening to the youths, but each one teach one. If you ever listen to them, you would know how deep their thoughts are, not because they're young. One young lady tell me, say, yeah, I'm a pit name enough for listening to you. That's wrong. That's a negative way. If you listen to them, and as an adult, you can give them more constructive, positive feedback that they, you wow them. And you might think they don't listen, but kids listen. Mm -hmm. That's my little piece to it. All right. And to add on, I would say um, to try to create a safe space. Once they feel like they're in a safe space, then they're more inclined to share. But it's kind of like 
doing different things to see how they feel safe. And I think it's from being vulnerable. Like, you know, like, I was your age once, too. Like, I started a lot of the, the high school ones with, hey, if you're 17, you think you know everything? Me, too. That was me at 17. No one could tell me anything. So just kind of, like, like lowering the playing field by, like, right. looking at them eye to eye as, as opposed to the, the look down type of thing because we're adults. Hmm. Yeah, we're really not that smart. Um, <laughs> We are not so, no, we're not so limitlessly smarter than a little kid. Like a little kid, like I, I, one of the things that I always tell kids is that you are the expert on you. And without your voice, the rest of us are impoverished. So whatever you have to say is important for all of us to hear. So if you don't share that, then we lose out. So we have to listen to the young people and ha give them those platforms in order for them to share. And that's ultimately, I think, what we, what we need to focus on is to empower folks to speak, to learn how to use their voice. And once they learn how to use their voice, like powerfully and constructively, then hopefully they won't stop. That's the whole idea. So on that note, thank you for your questions. Thank you for your questions, your comments. We are here together as family, as an artistic and cultural community to embrace each other in love and happiness and poetry and words. I want to thank our feature performers tonight, Radical Jazz and Shakoy Hibbert. Thank you. For the incredible work here tonight. I want to thank the crew that's been working in the background in St. Francis Center. Thank you all for helping to put this night together. To uh, the folks who helped put this on, African Anthology, What's Your Story, Author Services, uh, the, uh, the library, and of course the center. Big ups to Gary, who's down here doing the video. And to Maxine, who's out in the front working the tables and doing all that stuff. Big love to the Baker's Lab. I hope some of you had some lovely nibblies from the, from the table out front. And on your way out, if some of you want to talk to Shakoy, you want to get a book from her or whatever else, please make sure that you do that. And please, 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 please come to our next show. It's on the second, uh, second Wednesday of December, uh, when, of course, it'll be our holiday theme show. So come on out. Bring your people. Let's continue to build this, this crowd. <laughs> It's going to be really good. So thank you very much. My name is Greg Frankson. I'm your host and uh, organizer for Black Lit Durham. We love you. We're building it here in Ajax because that's where we are at. Canada's blackest town. Have yourselves a wonderful evening. Thank you.